Yo, Space Gang. Welcome to a brand new episode of the BK Space Show. I am your host, the BK Space, and I am here with my very lovely co-host, who has not unmuted her mic right now. Unmute your mic. <laughs> I thought it was already unmuted. That's my bad. It, it, it was <laughs> not. It was not unmuted. <laughs> and I was like, I was ready too. I was over here ready. <laughs> you was all go. I saw. All right. So now we got to do it again. Oh, I was just going to say it so you could just edit it in. I mean, that works too. Novocaine, baby. Hi, Space Gang. Welcome to the BK Space Show where pop culture meets society. And we talk about it a little bit and chop it up. But on today's show, nope, before we do that, Novocaine, do me a favor and tell them what they need to do for us really fast. Head on over to Apple Podcasts. Leave us a five-star rating and like, subscribe, follow us on Apple Podcasts. Also on Spotify, leave us a five-star rating and like and subscribe there as well. That's right. Like and subscribe to us everywhere you are. You know, if you're on Spotify, if you're on Apple, if you're on, on YouTube or any other place that our podcast is, because we're like pretty much everywhere, hit that Wherever like. Wherever you are, we are. Say no. <laughs> that That's a whole new slogan right there. <laughs> right there. All right. <laughs> All right. So on today's show, we have a very very special guest it's a person that's never been on this show before he's new to all of you guys we're excited to have him on i want him to make sure that before he comes up he unmutes his mic <laughs> <laughs> i thought it had already unmuted that's on me i'm just bad you know i gotta mess with you right i gotta mess with you but our guest today is a brother who trains dogs. And from what I can see, it looks like he's extremely good at it. So y'all might, y'all got to check him out, especially if you're in his area. But he trains dogs. Um, he's a mental health advocate as well, just like we are here. And I'm not going to hold, you know, do these long introductions because I ain't that good at them. So welcome to the show, Jerome Wright. What's going on, bro? How's it going, everyone? I'm surprised you didn't have the hand, uh, the applause coming in. Oh, man. we got a new program. I lost the applause, man. I miss them. I miss the hand. I miss the claps. Well, good so, morning to both of you. How are you feeling? Doing pretty well. That's I'm doing good. pretty well today. Well, let's okay. just see another day. Yes, compared, especially compared to a lot of days I've been having lately. Ooh, baby, today, definitely a good day. Yeah, you know, remember every day you wake up is another day undefeated. So, That's always keep that in mind. The positivity is about to be on a whole nother level today, apparently. <laughs> um, so on today's episode, we're gonna we're gonna rack your brain a little bit about some dog training stuff as well. But before we get into that, you know, we got to know your backstory. We got to know how you got to this point. So, tell us a little bit about your journey. To, uh, to dog training how did we get there um i was work at the time i was working at safeway um i was an assistant store manager and um i think i was just going through a dark period in my life where i felt like i felt like the world hated me um i wasn't hearing back from my friends and family too much um at the time i was kind of borderline homeless i was living in my friend's parents basement at the time and it was just it was just really rocky um and you know i just felt like i had nothing to live for so um and i remember on my boss my store the store manager he was talking about how his friend had some dogs that they were selling he was like why don't you get you a puppy puppies puppies always make you feel better and literally out of impulse i bought one (laughs) that's how it started um i bought one um at first i named him king and then i changed it to noir um, off nice. from Gundam Speed because that's the show I was watching at the time. And then um, my cousin hit me up like, hey, why don't you go back and get one for me? And then I bought, so I bought his brother, but then she changed her mind last minute but I couldn't take the puppy back. So I named that one uh, Fury um, and I named it after the my favorite uh, Zoid from um, the show New Century Zero. 
So right. I started with those two. Um, they were sleeping in the basement with me. Um, this is actually something some I haven't told anyone. You're the first to know. And everybody um, else. Don't, so, yeah. don't forget about that. Exclusives <laughs> over so, here. What? Exclusive. So, because I wasn't supposed to buy them. I just bought them out of impulse. And the place I was staying, I, I probably really shouldn't have had them. So while they were small, I used to just sneak them into the house, have them sleep <laughs> on the bed with me. Um, the basement kind of like led to the backyard. So I just was able to just take them outside, let them poop pee, bring them back in. Um, I had to take them to work with me. So I used to um, wow. used to put them in the grocery cart and like cover them with blankets and push them in the back. Like I was the manager, so nobody really said anything. I was yeah. like, oh, these are service dogs. And people were like, is that how that works? And, you know, <laughs> I know it does. So They're not just, supposed to ask that. Just so, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> They're not supposed to be asking is that how it works for the service dogs. That's all yeah. I'm saying. But go ahead. Oh, go you ahead. know that. that well, that's I just, just have my, know. I used to just have my pups in the grocery cart just while I'm stocking shelves. Had them in the office while I'm doing, like, paperwork and stuff. It was kind of funny. Oh, had them in the back. And, you know, everybody would just feed them, pet them and everything. So I got a lot of socialization through my job because I was, like, low-key sneaking them in and out because our DM or the head head manager of the place, he would be gone by the time they want to be in because they really want a good closer. So yeah. by the time I arrived, he was already clocked out unless, like, we had a, a district walk or something. And, everybody, you know, night crew, swing shift, they, you know, they don't they don't care, you know. It's kind of like a lawless land if you ever work those shifts at, at, a, at a retail. Yeah. So um, I was dealing with that. Um, eventually, I found a new and better job. I forgot which it was because I was bouncing around everywhere at the time. Um, and I used to just, to keep them quiet, I just started doing training just in my friend's basement or, uh, you know, during lunch breaks, you know, because I didn't want to get caught with them, basically. Yeah, so... Real um, quick, did you have yeah. like some form of knowledge of this before you got the dogs, or were you learning this on the fly? Um, I was I was kind of learning it on the fly. Um, my my step my dad and my uncle, my stepdad and my uncle both had Malinois, and my uncle he's obsessed with dog training. I kind of just mimicked what I saw him do. Okay, um, a little bit, but a lot of it was YouTubing. Okay. Took, you know, the greatest of you can and find it, anything on YouTube. You can. Yeah. And that's basically pretty much how it started. Um, time passes. Um, me and my mom, our relationship got better. She let me move in and bring my dogs with her. Um, she fell in love with both of them. And I was and um when I had to start working 12 hour shifts, I was away from home more. So she first she like she wasn't really rocking with that because she was like, oh, you got these dogs in my apartment. But then I would come home and she's training them, laying with them, <laughs> like sending me pictures like, hey, look, they're helping me do my homework. <laughs> just laying on her laptop and stuff. <laughs> and um, okay. yeah. And, um, you know, and then I started like sinking, sinking down again in depression a bit because it seemed like I, I was working too much. And that's still an issue that I battle with today is putting my value too much on how much I need to do and how much I can get done. It's because yeah. back then I would get called to pick up a shift and I would just do it, even though I didn't want to, but I felt like I had to. So, um, uh, you know, I was appreciative that my mom started uh, working with the dogs for herself because they kind of like what kept them consistent. And it's at the point where um, now, like, Fear, like Noir passed away in a few years mm -hmm. ago. He had some seizures. Fury's still here. But it's to the point where if I go anywhere, I could trust Fury to always come back. His recall is excellent. Um, his sit stay is is pretty good. Um, just I, you know, I traveled all over the country with this dog. I used to go to the mountains, and it got to the point where like if Fury saw something and he chased it, I'd be like, oh, he's gonna come back to the car, and I wouldn't even worry about it. And my friends would be like, are you are you sure? Twenty minutes would pass. We make it back to the car from the trail. He's sitting right there. Oh man, just, you, you had my dog very well. <laughs> This is how my dogs were, you know. Um, I wouldn't risk that, you know. That took a lot of repetition and practice, um, you know. So, uh, yeah, back back to the story. Um, I started uh, looking up dog videos on YouTube. There's a YouTube channel called Bully Badass TV, which I think is called Documentary TV right now. Mm -hmm. You know, started talking about a bunch of dog sport. You know, he was showcasing a lot of bully shows at the time, and Waypool is the one that kind of caught my mind. 
So then I started transitioning from just basic obedience to sport training and everything kind of like just took off from there. I, you know, I was hitting people up on Facebook, um, on Instagram, all over the world. It's like, hey, how do I get started? What do I need to do? What equipment do I need? And I was just getting various answers from people from all the way from uh, like Croatia, Russia, Germany, Ar- wow. especially people from Ireland helped me out. Um, There's a gentleman that used to live in South Africa. They used to help me out a lot. And um, okay, internationally known. Okay. For real. So basically, you had to do a lot of networking. Yeah. To, to make this dream happen for yourself. But was that the goal at that moment, or were you just doing it to for yourself? Where were the um, was the intention to have your own business like that? The intention at the time was just to do it myself. To be honest, um, I was to be honest, I wasn't really far sighted at the moment. Um, I didn't really have any big goals. I was I was too worried about personal issues at the time to where I wasn't even thinking about running a business or starting a business. Um, I was dealing with some drama with some friends. Um, a lot of people like our past was kind of catching up to us and everybody was getting in trouble. So that was my main focus. You know, my dogs were my escape. I was just looking for extra things to do with my dogs, you know, to keep me level, you know, mm-hmm. to keep me from freaking out, having the mental breakdowns or whatever. So, um, I yeah. I think that's very, 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 unique and comforting to hear that you at least found something to help you cope through that time. Because I think that, uh, well, at least with my experience, finding healthy healthy ways to cope through everything is probably a major key to just make it through to get to the other side. So um, I'm so sorry that you had to go through all of that. No, it's, yeah. it, trust me, people been through worse. It was, um, and I've been blessed to at least have a good support system to keep me afloat. Because the reason why I was so down and out is just because of some mistakes I made in the past. And, you know, yeah. some people felt like, I'll have to admit, some people are like, hey, you know, because of your behavior, actions in the past, I kind of like let you be too close. So I had to like rebuild those relationships back up. Yeah. And, you know, that, that's part of the reason why, you know, I'm such an advocate for mental health, you know, because I used to, release everything through anger you know mm. anger and frustration i was gonna and ask you about that okay go ahead you you, you and me both <laughs> oh. you know what go ahead no okay. you no, no 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 i was just gonna say you and me both for that because oh. i could definitely attest to uh releasing it out of frustration and anger all because you you just don't know how how to feel through it you don't know how to express that emotion or sometimes it's just like a cluster. Oh, I was about to cuss. My bad. Mm-hmm. We, we PG again. We're PG bad. again. PG oh 13. PG it's 13. just. <laughs> I, no, 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 no. I caught myself. It's just like uh, your all of your thoughts are clustered in your brain, and it's like everything's smashing together. So you're mad at yourself for having all of those emotions on the inside, and you're mad because you can't express it. And then you're mad because you don't quite understand it, at least for my experience. Yeah. So I definitely know how and what that is for sure. Yeah, and I think I think at least for me, and I, I think it, it may go for you and many others. Um, it just stems from not having much emotional intelligence. Um, yeah, just growing up, you know, you know how like a lot of families uh, they don't let their kids kind of express themselves. You know, don't cry. Don't scream, you know, you know, what you're crying about, I'll give you something to cry about. And I think that kind of like hinders our, like stuns our growth as it far does, as for sure. emotional awareness, you know, because we learn, because, so, hold on, before I go off, I feel as if when we're children, we need to experience those emotions as soon as they hit us. Yeah. And we need to be allowed to experience these emotions because then we start to learn our triggers and our limits, you know. And I feel as if, um, kids who got to experience that they're the ones that turn that turn into the adults like hey i don't like this that makes me uncomfortable so i'm gonna remove myself versus Mm -hmm. the rest of us we've been told to just put up with it and put up with it and i think that we don't realize that we're allowing ourselves to kind of like play games with our threshold you know Mm -hmm. then we're always willing to take whatever mental or physical abuse that we're experiencing or whatever stress that we're experiencing 
to the absolute limit and then we snap and then we want to and then we blame ourselves for snapping so much not realizing that we were conditioned to endure that yeah. you know we weren't we weren't uh taught by our fam by our family or guardians to advocate for ourselves when we were young we were just told to just brush it off and i think that's where that stems from for me you know I think if I was allowed to cry or, you know, be in the moment and experience those moments. Just in that moment. Exactly. And all that, then I would learn that I would have learned so much about myself to where, hey, you know, these things trigger me. These things hurt me. So I'm just going to remove myself from these situations. But instead, right. I was walking around like, you know, I've been through this. I can deal with this. I, you know, I made it through it, not realizing that I don't need to put put myself. Just, it. just because you could deal with it doesn't mean you got to be dealing with it. <laughs> so um, we talked about therapy mm -hmm. uh, in our pre-talks. So how do you, as an adult, if after everything you said you went through as a kid, as an adult, where do you make that decision and say, OK, boom. I need to make a change and this is how I'm going to make that change. How did that come about? Was it just training with the dogs that made that happen for you? Or was it something else along with uh, that? Day? Um, when I wanted to, when I just decided that I wanted to be a, a dad eventually, like I wanted to have a family and I thought to myself, I cannot begin a family with this current mindset or this current spirit that I have. So I need to better myself that way I can be the best husband um, the best son, the best father that I can be, you know, and that's where that came from. We also talked about applied behavior analysis. And yeah. can you tell me in the show a little bit about what that is and how that applies to you and what's your work okay. there? All right. So um, I actually just discovered what the field was last year when, um, when I was doing security and somebody who was currently working at the facility I work at now told me about it. Mm -hmm. But um, basically, we work with uh, kids, kids with, uh, you know, behavioral issues, learning disabilities, autism spectrum, and so on and so forth. <coughs> and the job kind of, you know, I can't go into too much detail because a lot of it is HIPAA. Um, of course. But the job kind of um, opened my eyes a lot to, you know, how much, how important it is to instill, you know, importance into children, how to instill... You know, it's such a superiority almost, you know, because, you know, it seems as if uh, when we don't establish that very young, then when they grow up, you know, insecurities tend to like flare up, you know, but if the kid grows up with a sense of like superiority, for lack of better words, you know, then they are less likely to doubt themselves, less likely to question things, you know, I guess the less like, and I think the less likely to like fall into peer pressure. Um, and that's that's one thing I learned from I'm, I'm kind of learning from this field. The other thing I'm learning from this field, you know, is basically just to help build things up or help build people up. Um, a lot of techniques that they use in applied but behavioral analysis is the same thing that we use in dog training as far as uh, teaching, how, teaching them how to learn before mm -hmm. they can learn, you know. OK. Um, yeah. So, but it, it's it, um, it's the most rewarding job I've had. Um, you know, we work with I work with a not you know some kids who are struggling to be independent. We kind of help them provide the skills to be independent. Um, we work with kids who um, don't really speak, you know, or nonverbal as we call them, and we kind of like trying to help build the steps so they can start like speaking words or at least use a tablet to communicate with others, you know? So yeah. it's part of that, but I guess where, where it comes with the correlation of, um, with dog training is, um, you do this, you get this basically, you know, holding, holding the demand is, as we call it in dog training. And, uh, cause some kids, uh, you know, they just want, they just want to, I don't want to say take and take, but there's certain things that give them leisure and certain things that like give them satisfaction that they like indulge in all the time. And if mm -hmm. we want them to function in, like mainstream school or out there in society, we got to like teach them that, you know, get what you want all the time. Mm -hmm. So we kind of like set up these programs to where, okay, if you want, really want this, you got to do this, you this first, for and then we reward you, you know, kind of the same with dogs. And then as they progress, you keep increasing that further and further and further. Yeah. You know? Oh man, that is 
first of all, that's beautiful work. Because yes, it is. We don't have a lot of men, let alone black men or any of that, in these fields yes, that are true. out here speaking about it. And I go to my kids' school a lot. And the one thing they always talk about is how there's no men showing up for these things. And we've we are here in our community making a change for that. Men are starting to show up a lot more now yeah. for little, you know, parent days and playground days and things of that type mm -hmm. of nature. So, you know, I think it's a very beautiful thing when we have our men out here supporting our children and not saying, oh, it's, that's a woman's thing, you know? Because yeah. I think it takes both to 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 raise a community or to raise a kid. You know, we need, we need everybody, all hands on deck. All hands on deck, and, yes. And the field really touches me because I guess it's like, it's a brand new field. I didn't hear of it until recently. Mm -hmm. And even when I tell my friends and family about it, they never heard of it. But <coughs> the same kids that I kind of work with or a lot of the kids that I went to school with in elementary and middle school, because I was, um, you know, I was a special ed for the majority of my uh grade school years mm -hmm. and you know when i when i talk to people at my job about like you know my experience they say well yeah that's what they used to do before this field is just lump all these kids in the classroom and just call it special ed you know not mm -hmm. realizing that these kids have individual needs mm -hmm. so if it, so um it makes me feel good that there's like more resources for children that i used to go to go to school with you know, who yeah. some of them I still keep in contact with to this day. Like, we're still Facebook friends. I still follow them. I still check. And I'm like, hey, I hope everything's good. Just because I have that attachment to them. So we were all in those small classrooms together, you know, mm -hmm. for so long. So that's why I'm glad to be a part of this field, because I feel like I'm helping children who are like me and like them more efficiently and doing better than, the re than those who are helping us. Not saying that they weren't trying. But there's just more resources there's now. There's way yeah. more resources now. More resources, more knowledge, more, more knowledge. understanding. Yeah. yeah. So. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, my heart. <laughs> that is very beautiful. Clap it up for that one. That was very beautiful. Um, my heart. <laughs> the last thing before we switch gears here, we talked about your experiencing, um, well, you wanted to be a parent and your experience growing up with your parents. Do you feel still feel up to talking about that now or? Yeah, we could we could talk about that. Um, so disclaimer, I just want everybody to know that me, the majority of the family like really mend things together. So if I so any of my family members see this, like, you know, it's like I'm not holding it against you. You know, I'm not bringing it up to be bitter. It's just it's just like, part of the story. Yeah, it's just yeah. part of the story. So. Where do we start here? I, I I think you brought up your stepdad. Yeah. Yesterday. So what was the relationship like with him? Um, it was cool and it was rocky at the same time. Um and alcohol kind of like played it played a huge part of that. Um it was I had to be I felt at least how I felt as a kid, I felt like I had to be perfect. I had to be like the perfect man. Yeah. Or else like I just wasn't accepted as his son, you know? Um, and I felt that way for my mother as well, because, you know, he would say certain things and she would just sit there and kind of like not, not do anything, you know, like, um, yeah. like, you know, the whole typical uh, don't cry and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so imagine that, but I felt like him and my uncles kind of like elevated that when it comes to me, me and my cousins. Um, Cause you know, um, we we didn't grow up in the same era that they did. Um, my family, most of my family that I grew up with, you know, they're from Oakland, they're from Gary, Indiana, Chicago, all these Big different cities. places. Yeah. So whenever I had areas. any type of trouble, or let's say I was getting bullied, you know, off top I was called a bitch, or I was called oh, it's I cussed. I apologize. It's okay. That's the one. That that one is fine. That one is yeah, fine. Okay. That's that's our called, one for the day. Yeah. I was calling all sorts of uh, profanities and explicitives, you know, as like a six, eight year old, yeah. you know, mm. dealing with just regular issues like, oh, man, I, I'm from here. You know, we did. We just did this. We just did that. Not realizing that I didn't really have the fr friends like that, you know, <laughs> you know, just go run up and fight somebody. You know, I. but then when I did get into fights, you know, I would get in trouble, but mm. I wouldn't I wouldn't be called those words. That yeah. would hurt me so much, and I think that kind of like 
was like the foundation of my self-destructive behavior growing up because, you know, I didn't have, I was getting picked on at school, but then I was getting picked on at home as well. To the point where like being angry and like being ready to fight became what was acceptable. You know, even though they would say, you know, you're getting under all this trouble, blah, blah, blah. But at least, you know, I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't being disrespected. I wasn't being yeah. demasculized by my own family, but that would happen. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember I had this, I had an uncle um, who had a daughter and he would always say that his daughter's tougher than I am or stronger than I am, you know, just because mm-hmm. I was so sensitive and I, you know, I used to cry a lot and, you know, for a long period of time I didn't, but now it, in present day, I cry to everything. Like I can't watch the movie up, or else tears will fall down my face. I feel it. But, I understand. But back, but back then, you couldn't do that. Um, yeah. Like even me and my brothers, like when I would hug them, we, um, you know, we used to call each other the the f word that we're not gonna say. You know that core, like that's a derogatory term towards the LGBT. But that word used to fly around the house all the time. You show any love towards like your cousins, your brothers, anything. All you a little, and then. Yeah. So that was kind of the household we, I felt like we were growing up in at the time. And, you know, it started to ease up as um my par- as my parents got older and my little brothers got older because I felt like they were being treated a lot. They, they were being treated differently than I was, you know. Um, and I think it was because, you know, I was a special needs kid and they were kind of like more normal, less, so- less socially awkward. So it was – less stressful to deal with them than it was with me yeah and um yeah that kind of like just led led me on the path of like kind of like self self-destruction i was you know dating girls i shouldn't associating with people that i really shouldn't have but i felt like it was something i needed to do not only to like get the approval of my family but another thing my family used to throw in my face is uh as uh my blackness you know i used to get called whitewashed all the time uh by all sides of the family um by my step by like my mom my mom's side my stepdad's side and my biological father's side but my biological father's side like they were speaking more of um they felt like i was being tainted by living in colorado you know my mom and my grandma used to go back and forth between each other over about what kind of schools i went to because my grandma was you know she was old school she was like he needs to go to school with black kids be around his own family other that's why that's why he's having all these troubles and my mom disagreed so it became it became like such a thing to where my mom you know was kind of like hesitant on me visiting them because i would go out there spend months or or a year with them come back with a whole different attitude and, you know <laughs> she kind of didn't like that you know, so, I feel like your blackness will be questioned whether you're with all black kids or not, all because of what you're interested in. That's how it was for a lot of yeah. us growing up through yeah. the '90s. You know, um, yeah. being being around black kids for me was pretty much the default. So I thought that I thought all black kids was growing up with other black kids, but that was not the case at all. Uh, finding so, out things <laughs> like that as an adult is always culture shocking, right? Yeah, yeah. very yeah. true. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> And I feel like, you know, I feel like that's a subject that people should definitely talk about more because at least Most definitely. With, with me and friends that I grew around, you know, because Colorado's kind of like a mixed environment, but we're still definitely in the minority versus like compared to my little brother in Kansas City and my cousins in Kansas City who grew up around a black, you know, black people, no matter what, <coughs> you definitely, is there's definitely a difference in confidence in identity. Yeah. Between everyone. You know, in Colorado, you get, episode. Yeah, in Colorado, you. You get, your blackness you is questioned idea. by everyone. Oh, yeah, that was a nugget you dropped. We're definitely going to we're we're gonna definitely, visit this subject. We're gonna visit, yes, we are, for sure. You got to come back and talk about it, though. We definitely yeah. are going to. Thank you for that. Um, no problem. We got a couple more things we got to hit before we let you go. So you also brought up talking about the rejection of nerd culture. Um, yeah. You know, when you grow up, let me try to explain it to the people. When you grow up and you're into your Dragon Balls and you, you like all your toys and that type of thing. And certain people or certain groups of people will tell you that you're you're too old for that type of thing or that's kid stuff or you're weird for, for uh, liking anime, that type of thing. 
So what is your experiences with that? And I think you said you had a, a theory about why that happens. Yeah. So, um, you know, like, like, like a lot of nerd kids or alternative black kids, but you know, that was the term that people were calling. I'm not <laughs> alternative black. I'm black, black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I was, I was made fun of for liking a lot of stuff that I liked, um, in school and at home. Not so, you know, funny enough, not so much by like my mom, because my mom used is low key the one that introduced me to anime. Dude, I was more I so like that. my cousins and my Shout out to mom. I love that. Yeah, mom, because, um, I, you know, I, I used to catch a different bus than the other kids. And uh, Toonami used to come on early, early in the morning when Adult Swim would come off. And Zoids and G Gundam used to be the first thing that came on. So, like, oh, you know, you like trains and robots. So I think you would like this. Because um, at the time I was I was obsessed with a Godzilla and Mecha Godzilla was my favorite monster. Yeah, and, uh, you know I just had an obsession with robots from the beginning. So my mom introduced me to that show and I watched it every morning and everything kind of like shot up from there. Then when I get out of school, Toonami was on again and then Gun of Wing was on. It was just you know it kind of took off from there. But um, yeah, I was made fun of for it by like family and school and everything everything like that except my mother. Um, and my theory I was going to discuss was um I Wait, feel as if before you before you start on the theory uh-huh. and you did not go to school with black kids right no exactly that's all I wanted to say <laughs> that's all I wanted to say you still was getting picked on for your interests but there were other black kids that had those same interests and they were deemed white yeah so that's what that's what made me say that like that. I hate that whole uh, that's white people stuff. Like, no, yeah. stop it, stop it. Actually, it's Asian. If you're in anime, it came from Japan, most of it, Japan, China. You know, so first of all, you're lying. It's not exactly. a white thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's crazy, like, because at least my experience in Colorado, especially when people come into Colorado, you'd be surprised. Like, they don't consider black folks in Colorado black. Mm? A lot of people what? don't. Yeah, because they say that we're like not. Part of the culture we don't know what it's like being from even though a lot of us moved here from somewhere else you know they think all you know they call it being a colorado nigga or whatever and they what wow you know, yeah I've like, that's a huge that. thing that's a huge thing Dang that people say, oh, I'm not. yeah they'd be like i'm not from colorado i'm not from colorado you know they kind of like make it seem like colorado is like another form of dominican like we're just not black or something you know Wow! Yeah, uh, like we're, we're, like we're talking BK about it. it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. This is new. Like, this is new to me. I never. I, I never even thought about it. You remember that girl that we were in the Twitter space with? She was from Colorado, and she was making it mm. seem as though the black experience was so amazing, and she was never shunned. Maybe her. I mean, her experiences probably could have been different in a different school. Yeah, I mean, there are like, yeah, yeah, there are like black sections in Colorado, but like a lot of people from out of town, they come here. And they just anything black in Colorado, they say it's like not good enough or not legit enough. It's like Jerome, you tall too, aren't you? Six two. See, so they probably had this weird expectation from a black man. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. I too many that a lot of people do That's that. What it is. Stereo, yeah, stereotyping is a thing that kind of has to stop, especially within the black community because exactly. we stereotype ourselves a lot as well. And it's crazy because. Everything, if you are black, mm-hmm. you are having the black experience. <laughs> it just, just is what it is. It's not Period. a difference. What it's not a monolith. There are many types of black, and hood is not the default black. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's there what TV go. told you. That's not That's true. What TV it's told many you. types of black people. That's what TV around. told you. Yeah, I think everybody's we're part of- a part of some gang somewhere. We not everybody has that experience. Yeah, I think what the issue is is. Colorado doesn't really have like a de- definitive black culture. Like, like through years, it seems like we've always like picked up some other state slang, some other state style. Oh. Like we're like we're like Colorado doesn't have a definitive style because it is like one of the white supremacist capitals of the country. I'm not gonna lie. You know, we've had high schools named after KKK wizards and all that stuff like that. And Sounds cities like the style is survival. The KKK wizard. <laughs> Oh yeah. my god! Yeah, I'm not even kidding. You know, they've just recently started changing the names and stuff. 
just recently. I believe like, it. The last two, three years. Ever since that doesn't COVID. sound like it's going well. Yeah. The way this country is rebelling against history. But these are different conversations. We we gotta put a button on let's this. Get, before, let's get but, to this theory right quick though. Before you oh yeah, I forgot about the yeah. theory. Yeah, let's what's go, the theory yeah. for this? Why All right, is uh, there a rejection of nerd culture? All right. So what I believe what happened is um a lot of kids, you know, at least especially our generation, uh, you know, those who was you know, all the memes about us, you know, being depressed all the time and shit. And I think the reason why that is is because a lot of us just dealt with a lot of trauma growing up in mass. And I believe that when you're a child and you go through a traumatic experience, uh, you know, whether it be physical, mental, and, and, and verbal, um, you kind of like just stop doing the things that you love in order to cope. You know, you kind of push yourself to take on a stronger role or persona in order, in order to get through you know so like maybe you'll stop watching cartoons you maybe even stop like indulging in sports that you love you try to make yourself an adult <coughs> take we all take our responsibilities to kind of get through what you need to get through you know and Absolutely. even though you may improve academically or something you kind of like put your childhood on pause you know because maybe some kids you know their parents were like really really on them and verbally abusive about their work. So, you know, they just stop indulging in things that they love so that they stop getting yelled at at home. Um, you know, maybe some kids, they just stop watching TV or coming home at all and being out in the streets because they were afraid of their parent coming home to their parents because maybe how their parents were acting or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like different, very, there's different versions for everyone. But what I believe, a... Oh, go but, ahead. Go ahead. But Say what ahead. I believe, what I believe what happened is a lot of kids, you know, grew up too fast and let go of everything that, you know, was making them, keeping them youthful and laughing and smiling. Mm -hmm. And then when other kids don't experience that, or maybe they have different coping mechanisms, like some kids, you know, maybe watching these shows is their coping. But I think the majority of kids, because, you know, parent culture at the time was you got to grow up, get a job, do all this and this, this, this and that. And they expected us to take on a lot of responsibilities at like fucking nine, oh, <laughs> at like eight, nine, ten years old, you know, saying, "Oh, when I was your age, I was doing this. When I was your age, doing that." I think I was. But we didn't need to be doing that at our age because yeah. everything had evolved so fast, and I don't think the generations before the for us as millennials, they didn't expect everything to evolve as fast as it did. Then we yeah. can, here here we come. You know, we ready to evolve with the time. On top of we have the awareness of trauma because. A lot of past generations probably have been traumatized worse than us, but they didn't have the awareness that we have. Yeah. Facts. So so not only are they traumatized, but they're misdiagnosed or undiagnosed. Exactly. That, that right exactly. there. Because they exactly. didn't realize the issues that they were putting upon us with tradition and certain things in the culture that they was trying to keep going. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like you said, you have to assimilate into these things because your parents want you to, or family members want you to, or society as a whole expects you to be this thing. When really, it's not what we, what we were seeing. We were like, why mm -hmm. would I need to be that when those things that you went through or those things you had to go through don't exist anymore? You know? And yeah. then that's not even get on the fact of what our people had to go through through society. In these yeah. past what hundred years, I guess. Let's yeah, just give it a yeah. hundred. Let's just say a hundred for today. You yeah. know. And um, so you know, so then you have the kids who had to grow up too fast. Um, unfortunately, didn't get to keep their youth, you know, didn't get the didn't get to keep that, you know, that child spirit. And then growing up, years, years and years pass, you know, and maybe they start to heal and recover from whatever it was. Um that traumatized them, or maybe they started to you know, take that shell off that they created. And then mm -hmm. I think wherever you left off in your childhood kind of like catches up to you. Of course. And that's why we see a lot of people jumping into anime and nerd culture and cartoons and stuff. And I was telling them that I had a cousin who kind of like, um, he like stopped playing video games and stopped watching cartoons very, very young. And he thought it was immature, but then, you know, life started getting really good for him and then he wanted to rewatch power rangers because he never got to finish it i love that yeah things like that and you know so that's where i when people say oh man all you guys used to make fun of us but now you're into it 
I think all those people are a lot of people are getting into it now are getting into it because they didn't have the the space to do it when they were younger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, their I, mind was their you know, they had too much going on in their mind. Well, you know, for me, uh, it was, said, uh, I was too uh, broke to get, stay into these things. And as you can see, when life got a little bit better for me, I started collecting stuff. So, and you know, my and I think that's what it was as kids, your parents are telling you, hey, you got to do this to survive in the future. Mm-hmm. And then now that we are able to survive easier in the future, it's like, okay, now we have a little extra money and a little extra time. We can spend time with our kids. We can go out a little bit more and we can buy all the free that we not get. Kids. Got one before we lay. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. The internet was tripping, right? It happened again. <laughs> it happened again. Today yeah. is one of them days. All right. What was the last thing you heard me say? Uh, I don't even know. <laughs> You said uh, for these <coughs> kids, friend. and then when you said for these kids, it started breaking up. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna move on. We'll fix <laughs> it in the post. We'll fix it in the post later because we got to do the top five. Your personal top five hip hop of all time. Your top five artists in hip hop uh, of all time. I forgot to even think about this question. Yeah. See, that's on you because I gave you weeks, sir. You had <laughs> weeks. Like. <laughs> Like a couple of weeks. I was about to say a few weeks, right? That was like yeah, the main question yeah. we knew. Well, yeah, it's the only question we had ready and prepared. Yes, definitely the only one. I have a question. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. So I know how you know you're you have like this affinity for animals and dogs specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, I have an issue with the city that I live in and seeing like these big dogs in small areas like i live here in washington dc and a lot of the like apartments housing whatever it aren't really big areas and they have like these big breed dogs in these small homes so i just wanted to see how you felt about that with a bigger breed in a smaller area um well dogs sleep the majority of the day they sleep like anywhere between like 14 to 20 hours. So <clears throat> as long as you're giving them enough mental and physical stimulation, it is possible. It's another thing if they're just at home all day and then you come home and you just keep them in the kennel all day, then you know, that's kind of miserable. But, you know, let's say you get home, you let them out, you do some training, do a lot of mental stimulation, take them out, walk around the block, you know, even, even if you can't go far, just let them get some sun. You know, open windows. Let them like just chill, let them bathe in the sunlight a little bit. You can you can thrive with a big dog in an apartment. You just got to make sure you're giving that stimulation. Okay. You know, a lot of people that think sense. that dogs sleep for eight hours and they're up for the rest. Dogs don't. Dogs don't operate that way. Dogs right. very much love their sleep. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're on grooming tips, <clears throat> what is the best dog food, by your opinion? Of uh, raw feeding. Raw feeding. Copy that because that's what we were talking about when, whenever we decided to get a dog. Definitely the raw food. Yeah. What a nice mix the... of pro- oh, go ahead. Say a nice mix of proteins, organs, bones, you know, with some occasional chopped ver- veggies and certain fruits. You okay. know, you some honey and oils in there too. It's gonna do okay. you justice. Okay. So would you also say that's the best way to keep your dog healthy? Yes. I believe so. Is there anything else we should know about keeping our animals healthy when they're in the house or when they're domesticated? Just a just a lot of stimulation. That's what is really what it comes from. Um, definitely, don't let the dog feel like it owns anything. Everything is yours, and you're allowing the dog to use it. Mm. I think a lot of people make that mistake because you know they're trying to be their dog's best friend, which which isn't wrong, you know. But there's a way to do it. It's different than it is with people. Mm, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. What's the best way to keep your dog safe from harm or theft or anything like that? What is your tips for that? Lock your doors because black people don't lock their doors. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> I will be real. I there have been times like now, now I lock my door all the time, mm-hmm. but 
a year, two, three years ago, it's like I wake up like, oh man, I forgot to lock the door. Let me go down here real quick. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Definitely gotta lock your door. Cause I know a lot of people they don't lock their doors because they're afraid of losing their keys. So I would say to keep your dog safe from harm or being stolen, get a lanyard, make copies of your keys and lock your doors. You know, because at least from my experience, a lot of stolen dogs were came from like neglectful, you know, neglected security. Okay. And the majority of the times is they left their back door unlocked or they left their front door unlocked. And it was really stupid. You know? Oh, just ran out the door. Peace out. All right, yeah. I'll holler at y'all. Okay, don't so, treat me oh, right and, anyway. But don't let just anybody into your home, especially if you're like an exotic dog. Like, don't don't let new people into your home because they will steal it or they'll tell somebody about it and they may try and steal it. And that happens a lot, especially if like a French bulldog or something. That happens to people all the time. They come to buy a pup from you, and next thing you know, you have guns in your face and they take all your dogs. That's oh, wow. a, a common thing. Okay. So last question. What okay. are your top don'ts when you Oh, own I think she's going to say top five again. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, that's coming. I just want to know what his, his top don'ts for owner the dog is. What should we uh, not be doing? You can give me your top three. Top three for what dog owners shouldn't do. Shouldn't <laughs> do. Um, they shouldn't let the um. You know, the, this is a personal one. They shouldn't teach their dog to pee in the house. You know, like with puppy pads and everything. I understand when they're, when they're really small, yeah. But when you're when it's safe enough to go outside, start taking them outside right away. Because otherwise, you're just teaching them like, okay, pee in this corner of the house. Okay. Um, number two, don't get a breed that you that you can't meet its requirements. Because um, mm. people people misunderstand that or misunderstand that a lot of dogs were bred and created to run long distances or fight mm-hmm. big animals for a long mm-hmm. period of time. So therefore they just have a lot of inherited energy and inherited drive. And if you cannot, and if you do not have the energy to match that to like, to manage that, then you shouldn't get it. You know, and so I basically think you're that, saying every dog has a different, uh, regiment. Yes. You know, yeah. Every dog sure. has a different regimen. Like, um, there are some dogs where when they're here, like when I do boarding, um, walking them for like a like 10 minutes or like a mile is good enough. Other dogs, I got to run for like three, five miles and then they'll be satisfied. It's just different requirements for different dogs. Of course, size is a is another factor as well, you know, because smaller dogs, they may not have to go as far. But, you know, they're terriers. They have that drive. They, you know, terriers like to kill things. They like to shred things up. So maybe you know that requires you to like play a lot of tugging games with them or have a flirt call mm-hmm. play with that. You know, it's just uh just doing the research about about your breed, not just show dog and pet stuff, but like what the dogs were bred for. Because likely what they're bred for, you need to have some sort of game or routine that kind of matches that to satisfy them. Right. Oh, that's a good tip right there. Cause yeah. uh, I don't own dogs, but I had I wouldn't have thought of that at all. Yeah. And like, especially like with terriers or dogs or dogs in the terrier group, dogs in the guardian group and stuff like that. And guardian group is like boxers, corsos, pressas, American bulldogs and and all that stuff. And like a lot of hound dogs, like you have to remember these dogs are used to running for miles to catch something and fight it until we caught up, you know, whether it was boars, bears, lions, um, other, you know, in in the dark ages, other dogs, uh, in the, for terriers, rats, badgers, and all that stuff, you know, that's inherited in them. And a lot of that stuff still goes on around the world and kicks up. And, oh, shoot, what happened? I, I don't know, but you're good. We can, still, we can still hear you, though. You can... Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> we, we, can't, we can't still hear you. We, we're going to try to get him back in. Oh, there he is. I think <laughs> what the heck? it was going so well. Oh, and he's gone again. Oh man. Um that that was some good information that was happening right there. And as soon as we get him back in, I guess we'll get his top number one thing for dog breeds. 
And, yes. and then we'll probably get his top five hip hop of all time. Because that's still a thing I would like to know, you know, because, you know, every guest on our show has to have that top five. They got to tell us, sorry, if you want to come up here and talk to us, we're going to talk. But I yeah. got to know that top five. That top five is a thing for us. Like, it's every, it's like a rite of passage here now. It is. Like you it have is. to have, we got to have a top five. Everyone, we have, we have eggs, everyone, every single last person. And not only that, we still got a, we still got a lot of show left over. We got to talk about um, a the, lot. That, we got a okay, lot not a though. lot, but we we still got to talk about we, we you and I on the B side. The B side is coming up. We talk about some some Jay Z and some Beyonce, you know, some Riri. All right, here we go. All right, yeah. All right, so I had to restart my browser, or else the camera wouldn't work. Oh man. Okay, so <laughs> you were at number one. Your top thing. For your top don't. Top don't. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, don't get a dog unless you're ready to spend the rest of your life with it. And that's okay. a personal one because, you know, even though they're a part of our lives, we are their whole life. Okay. Okay. So, I agree. Even as like a dog trainer, sport person, like I will not get purchase a dog unless I, I intend for it to die with me. You know, so that's what I'm going. So would you say that when you own a dog and then you get to a point where you no longer want the dog, it's a lot harder for that dog to assimilate to another owner? No, dogs move on. Dogs move on. <laughs> I didn't know. I, I just thought it would be a good question. He was just like, yeah. that was a dumb thing to say, sir. No, it wasn't, it wasn't dumb. It's just like, <laughs> that's what I admire about dogs. Dogs move on. They don't hold, they don't hold shit in. They don't feel sorry for themselves. You know, have you ever seen... You probably haven't, but like when dogs like get, have you ever seen like a dog or coyote get like hit by a car? They just keep going. I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. I have. They keep going. Well, us people, oh my God, somebody call the police. No, they just keep going. They don't feel sorry for themselves. They clean themselves, do what they got to do and just keep going. You know, they don't walk up to people and ask them for help. They just go. And that's what I, that's the kind of mindset I try to keep for myself whenever shit happens. You know, I just need to move on and just move forward, you know. Uh, re, you know, bitterness, guilt, and regret are, are wasted emotions or useless yes, emotions. So, yes, I think that was a great way to end that conversation. Now, sir, um, you got to give us this top five, though. Like, yes. we can't let you run away. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I got to listen. I get it. Even if your top five changes tomorrow, today your top five still has to be something. <laughs> So top five favorite hip hop artists of all time. Of all time. Go. Of all time. Oh, to you, man. not don't worry about no other list or right. anything like that. Just worry about it for you. What is your top five of all time? Okay. Man, this is hard. <laughs> uh, shoot. Some people cheated. Do I want to say? How you cheat on your own top five? Because they give us like a top seven. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right with the honorable mention and the second honorable mention. Yeah. yeah. All right. So all right. So I think I know how I'm gonna do this. Okay. So I have to put number five. Uh shoot, I can't I can't have people two people tie it. Okay. Make there one uh, make one see, <laughs> make one an honorable mention. <laughs> all right. Number five is gonna be dub C. Dub C. Okay. Um Number four is going to be Ice Cube. No, okay. I would not. Well, Ice Cube's number two. I'm going to make Ice Cube number two. Okay. But the reason why Dub C, I start with Dub C, is because that's the rapper I actually used to listen to the most and try to imitate. I used to try to dress just like him. So he deserves to be in top five for that personal reason. I feel um, I used to watch all this sea walking. I used to imitate it and everything. So he's going to be number five for that reason. Um, number four is going to be Nas. Nice. Nice. Okay. Nas. Um, just because I listened to his, his music a lot. Um, I had Illmatic on repeat. When I used to try to write poetry and all that, it was all of his beats that I was using. So he's going to be number four. Number three is going to be Tupac. 
Okay, okay. It's going to be number three. We still solid here. Um, Number two is Ice Cube because, I don't know, that's just, I feel like out of all the music artists, this is who I listen to the most. You know, Ice Cube took, like, a huge chunk of my childhood and even adulthood. You know, just when you angry, like, the ice, old school Ice Cube, just like my music. It's true. Again. Yeah. Yeah, that's the vibe. Yeah. That's the vibe for Ice Cube for sure. Number one, but my number one is going to be Kendrick, for his because I just love how much, how beautiful of an artist he is. You know, I not agree. just not just his music, but his music videos. But yeah, so definitely Kendrick. I find it amazing how fast Kendrick rolls to a yeah. lot of people's top fives or tens in the past two three years. It's really a testament to his musical prowess for sure mm-hmm. to yeah. be put in the same epsilon of echelon i'm sorry of um tupac biggie jay you know it's a real artist it's an amazing and again ah. Ah. No, his <laughs> <laughs> Today it's like every time day. it's like every time you get ready to say something really for real it's like I could, all right so basically like, what i said kendrick is great it's amazing that he gets put in the top 10 with so many other amazing artists mm-hmm. and it's really a testament to his skills yes it is all right i said it again today is one of those days I, it's Kendrick a little, a, it's a little, it's a little dark outside, so my internet won't be a butthead. Yeah, but it's, cool. it's dark over here too. It's okay. It's fine. Kendrick it's is fine. in my top five as well. Kendrick Lamar is an, an amazing artist. Okay, everybody's talking about how Beyonce was snubbed. I feel like he was snubbed for our uh, album of the year because Mr. Rob, Mar- uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, baby. Yeah, that album was muy delicioso. I'm, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Kendrick like that, but I will say his wordplay and how he it's it's almost like Andre, but more complicated. He is like a more complicated Andre three thousand, and yeah. I didn't think that was a possibility that could happen. Yeah. And I don't know his music videos too is like it's it's theater. It That's is. what I love yeah. most about Kendrick. You know, yes. it's theater. Like, it really makes you want to, like, pay attention to everything that's going on. Exactly. It kind of, like, people are going to hate me for saying this, but it kind of reminds me back when, uh, like, you know, Michael Michael Jackson used to shoot his videos. It's very, very theater, you know? Mm-hmm. And that's what I like. And that's what I mean by Are they going to be mad at you because you brought up Michael Jackson? We can't take away his, his greatness. Of course yeah, not. But I'm saying, like, like, how I compared them. Oh, yeah. no, no, no. Kendrick, yeah. I think Michael is one of his inspirations, so... Boom, yeah. there it is. I was is. definitely going to say that <laughs> it feels like he's bringing back the art form of videos. Yes, he yes. is. I agree. Yes, he is. Because I feel like music videos just stopped being what we were expecting at the end of the day. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's what kind we of the were same running thing. the house for. <laughs> you know, it's like there's some cars. Maybe it's fast, or maybe the car's pulling up in slow motion and show off the wheels. The person steps out of the car. The camera shoots to the front angle. The person moving out. They do like this with the jacket or whatever. <laughs> they did like. Or oh, you gotta pop the collar every time. You gotta be like, yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah, you know, they walk by some girls. They touch their hand or give them a hug, give a dap to the homeboy. Then they start rapping, things like that. Or drink. the other music video, they just have a bunch of cars. Dudes are standing on it. Everybody's kind of like pointing at the camera like that. <laughs> And it's just all music videos are kind of the same, you know. That's why I don't I don't bother watching them. And I think that's kind of like how I I like kind of like fell out of love with hip hop almost. Like I don't really listen to it. No, I listen to a lot of lo-fi and boom bap now. Like basically all instrumental stuff. Yeah. You know, if I listen to a song, like uh it's it's cause I think it's funny. Like um I forgot that one song he like I forgot his name, but he made a song. He's like, My baby mama ain't shit. She won't let me see my son. Like that's why I listen to that all the time. That's kind of fucking funny. Are you talking about that guy that uh Reggie, what is it, Reggie Cows or Reggie Coles or something like that? And he had like um the character he was playing was called Bitter Man or something like that. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm like out no, of the that's culture. that's a whole that's a whole little skit that you're talking about, BK. But what Jerome is talking about, I think that's an actual song. Really? Yeah. I it's think that's the actual song. Wow. What he's talking about. 
it's one of those newer, I guess, newer rappers or something. I'm not really hip to the streets like I used to. All right, so the song is called Molly, and the rapper's name is uh, Fujiano. That's there. It is. Oh, okay, yeah. I, yeah. I haven't listened to a lot of his stuff, but I, I have heard of, of the there artist before. Yes, it's hilarious. Like at least to me, because most songs, you know, they talk about how like the dad's not helping or the man ain't. Whatever this dude is like, my baby mama age. <laughs> it's just so funny it to me. Let me see the baby. <laughs> we back. Oh, we done made it all the way back around to uh, was it no pigeons? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we back here. All right, we got to end this part, man. It was all right. amazing having you on. Thank you for coming through. We definitely learned a lot. Your story is is a magnificent story of triumph and I, I dig it we look forward to seeing where you go from here Thanks. um nova can you got anything to add before i thank ask him to plug his stuff thank you for coming by you know no this is very exciting as always you know well, anytime anybody come by is exciting yeah. but this, I have, this one was i hope you guys have me on more often oh no we're, you're coming back yeah oh, right definitely, definitely. you coming before, back before you run away from us you got to tell us where we can find you, your Instagram. Or... Uh, all right. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and all and Facebook, all under Sengoku Wakai. Uh, just a fun fact, Sengoku Wakai is me just putting my two favorite model kits together. That's how I got the name uh, from the Sengoku Straight Gundam and the Heavy Arms Kai Gundam. And I just messed the names together because I was lazy and I just didn't know what to put at the time. And that's what I was building currently when I was making my Instagram. Oh, okay. It, it just stuck. His yeah. Instagram is linked in the description of this life right now. You Gundam kids. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know what a model kit is, it's the robots that's on my shelf back here. Yeah. We both have that in common. So, you know, you definitely will be back because we're like Gunpla brothers at this point. So, at this yeah. point. Yeah, Nova, you should have known. All my dogs are named after Gundams. Did you you know told that? me. I remember. Yeah. I had to All just, you know, I'm just so shocked because I don't know. It just never tickled my fancy for Gundam. So yeah. maybe it's I'll a political try to thing. watch it again. It's definitely a political thing. Probably. Yeah. So. It's, but it's also like, I, used to, I also used to want to be an engineer growing up. Oh. oh okay. See? Because remember, I was, obsessed with I was obsessed with steam engines. And when mm -hmm. I was a kid, I used to think they were still around. But I was like, man, I would love to build one. I used to draw them all the time. And then mesh that with uh, my grandfather, you know, my father's side of, the fight, side of the family. My grandfather, my uncle, my dad, everybody built cars for racing. So I was used to, like, seeing machinery around me all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was introduced to Godzilla through my biological father. And that's how I fell in love with Mecha Godzilla. So it was just robots have always been around. Always been around. You know, whenever you know, when I was young, when Lego came out with Bionicle, I used to want every set. I used to make my own little creations with them. <laughs> so it just, it just everything kind of meshes together. You know, I like to mm -hmm. put things together, and you know, and Gundam just, just fits that mold. It's just the design is just beautiful. Yeah, you know? I feel it. I feel it. But we gotta let you go, man. But All again, right. thank you most thank definitely you. for coming through today. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we still got a little show left over. Oh, we still got a little bit. We still got a little show left. You know what time it is. Oh! It's time for the B-side. All right. So, do you know what we're talking about on the B-side, Nova King? The first thing we're talking about on the B-side. You know, it kind of actually rolled right in because we were sort of talking about the top five just now of hip hop. So we were talking about the top 50, top 50, top 50, the top 50, <laughs> the top 50 greatest rappers of all time. All right. So if you've been on Facebook, I know you've seen people posting about this top 50. It don't even matter. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. All whatever. of this You're stuff. Like Reddit. People have been mad, Everywhere. angry, arguing back and forth. Who deserves to be at the top? But I'm going to tell you now. <laughs> ah. I'm okay with number one. <laughs> number one. my In my top five, in my personal top five, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, he is number one of my personal top five. 
And here he is one more time. And I ain't said nothing on no social medias because I ain't want no smoke for nobody. <laughs> I ain't feel like arguing with nobody. Nobody. But my boy, the great one, the GOAT. Drake. Say no, nah, Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Jay-Z. Jigga, my ride listen, or die. Listen, I see people arguing all day all about day. why Kohe ain't supposed to be all at the number night. one spot. Well, he, he can, he's not the greatest of all time. He's Y'all sounds trash. Like, it sounds like some haters to me. And this is all subjective. Haters. I get it. I yeah. understand this. <laughs> it is all subjective. It is. But I feel but, validated. I feel validated. But let's look at some facts here, okay? We're talking about Jay Z. First, first and foremost, checkmate with the longevity, okay? We oh, are yeah. talking about longevity here. People are like, he wasn't even the greatest of his era when he was the big time. That's not the that's not the point here. That's I mean, not let's, the point. Let's just be okay? real. Snoop been in the game a long time too. And why he still putting out music. And all He's that. in the top 10. Snoop was in the top 10. We're going to talk about what's, who in the top 10. I know y'all <laughs> itching to know who in the top yeah. 10 of all this. But I'm even even I'm just saying, you know, Jay, Snoop ain't do it like Jay. No. Then let's talk about, oh, I'll leave that part for when we talk about the 10, top 10. But uh, Okay, you ready to go down the top 10? Do you have the list? I got the list here. Well, then say it. They ain't got that. Well, I, I didn't know if you wanted to say it or you. I, <laughs> no, I'm no, just no, trying no. to be generous and chivalrous and stuff <laughs> and throw you the, and you know what I'm saying, give you the generous. wild over there. You know what I'm <laughs> oh, that's bars right there. I'm just trying to be generous and chivalrous. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got a little bit in me. Um, Indie Club, y'all need a new member. Your boy. Um, all right. Number 10. Shout out to the Indie Club and shout out to Turtle Boy too, because he's been in the comments this entire time. Yes. And because of the stretch of the show, we didn't get to shout out anybody. Make sure y'all check him out. He's back streaming yes. on Twitch. Welcome back. Welcome back. So, you know, look him up. Turtle Boy. That's B-W-O-Y. All right. Number 10. Number 10. Nikki Minaj. How nice. do you feel about Nikki being at 10? Hmm. I don't have a problem with it, personally. But you know how the internet is. Yeah, I, it didn't bother me either. Out of all the female rappers throughout history, I feel like they got it right with her at number 10. And they better yeah, she, have put a woman in the top 10. That's all yeah, I'm Yeah, she, she definitely, if we're talking, again, longevity and being able to read. And that's another thing about these artists in the top 10. They've been able to reinvent themselves over and over again in different eras. And yep. Nikki is on the verge of doing that. Jay has done it several times. And you know, you just change the little thing here and there, change your content, and you can survive in this game. Uh, number nine was Snoop Dogg. Okay. Simple. Super reinvention. I mean, my man was going in the RB before a lot of rappers was going in the RB. So facts. And speaking of rappers in RB, number eight, Drake. 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 I, 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 Drake has I, had. One too many hit records not to be in the top 10. Yeah, he definitely deserves to be in the top about 10. Drake. I don't care what people say about Drake or whatever. I love Drake's music. I mean, his personal choices, that's his business. But his music, I could definitely see him being at number eight. That's a good choice. I'm no Drake fan, but I think he the, the number eight seems right. Mm-hmm. Right. I and mean, this is Billboard we're talking about people. Yeah, Billboard. Yeah, of course. So, you gotta, so Billboard one, and like, Vibe. And vibe. So it doesn't even make any sense why so many people are upset. People have been complaining about the billboard since the billboard's been billboarding. So it's like, if that's their sure that. choice, that's their choice. All right. So, and also, you got to give it to Drake because the man is literally changing the game in streaming. And if Chris Brown was a rapper, he would probably be in the top 10 just for that along as well. Alone yes. as well. Yes, I agree. Number seven. Which I'm gonna be honest, F I, baby. Please, I feel say like the Wayne baby. is too low. I feel like Wayne's too low. Excuse me. I feel like he's too low. I, I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, I'm he saying. should be in top five, is what you're saying? He should be higher than seven for okay. sure. Um, I just on his mistake, on mistake magic alone, he deserves to be higher than that. I will agree, and he deserves to be treated better here in the 2023. Little Wayne, what's going on with these venues? What's up with this tour? 
most yeah. of your, you know, most of your your audience are in the thirties now. Wayne, we need seats. We gotta sit down. That is true. What is going on with that? I don't know. I don't know, Lil Wayne, but uh, we need to have a talk. I don't know how, but uh, <laughs> let me know. Um, number six, Notorious B.I.G. Okay. I don't Decent, know. I guess mm. because who they put in the top five. Okay. All right. Decent. So this is where I feel like Wayne should probably be at this person. The number five spot should switch <laughs> places with Wayne. <clears throat> Eminem. Okay, so I finally, 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 finally figured out what it was. And the girls said it best on the podcast that they were doing on You People. She said it best. The only reason why Eminem is so hot or was so hot is because he was a white man and playing a black man's game. Period. Mm, like, I agree with if that, he though. was, if little, um, little, I was about to say, little Eminem. <laughs> if stop, he was, stop giving people ideas for rap names. If he was little Eminem, though, you know, if he was a black man, I do not think he would have gotten as many accolades as he had. I do not think <laughs> that uh, he would have even made as many hits as he did. Um, honestly, even at that time, okay, a lot of the, a lot of the music was getting away with, you know, what they were saying. So he would have been able to do that, but I really, truly don't think he would have been able to, it was a list I shared of, uh, the albums of the year for the rap artists in the past, what, 20 years or something I shared or 30 years, something maybe since 97 or something, 96, Mm -hmm. something like it, bro. Jerome, Jerome, every Rice single one, value. every single one of those albums should not have won. The way that he was set up, it was just he just won. It was just given to him. It was just like it yeah. feels that way. It you feels know? that way. Eminem and I will agree. Eminem and Lil Wayne should be switched. Uh, I will say for the world and mainstream artists, I could see him being in the top 10, but he's not in my top five. I no, he should be top five. Jerome Wright guest said uh, he should, it was because of his shock value. Yes. And I agree. But you given that much of all time because somebody was shocking when you had, I don't know, ODB out here running around at some point and a few other rappers. I, I feel like Eminem is great. And don't get me wrong. Lyricists put together beautiful strings of words. You know, he ain't never really said too much dumb stuff, not on purpose. So exactly. it's like, I give him his talent. I will definitely do that. But I just do not think he should be that high. But again, it is the billboards. So it is the billboards. We have to keep that in mind here. Uh, number four, Tupac. It's Tupac. Tupac, Tupac, Tupac. If Tupac is at number four, influence, it has to be influenced then because Biggie should definitely be higher than this as well. So not only am I going to say switch Lil Wayne and Eminem, but I'm also going to say after we switch Lil Wayne and Eminem, what you I don't know, to man. Say? I don't know. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I think I think um, Biggie, Biggie should probably be. I don't know, man. Influence though, is anybody okay. more influential on the game than Biggie though? I mean, there are plenty of people, but is Tupac more influential than Biggie? Ooh, that's a good question. Is Tupac more influential than Biggie? Or are they like four mm. point, four point? I mean, four A and four B at this point. Dang, I don't know. I never thought about that part of the question. Me either till just now when I said it. Look at me. (laughs) The question has always been who's a better artist. And I've always said that Tupac was a better artist, but I feel like Biggie was a better rapper. I agree. I feel like Go ahead, go ahead. When we talking about influences, how many, what we say for like Nicki Minaj, how many sons did Tupac birth compared to Biggie? That would be hard to gauge. 
I'm gonna have to think about that one. We're gonna have to come back to that on another episode. Cause, uh, okay, okay, yeah, we got to debate that out a little bit. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like he may lose points because where Tupac seemed more like a leader and a trendsetter himself by himself, like mm -hmm. he was gonna do what he was gonna do regardless of any backing or whatnot. Biggie seems like he only got that because of Diddy in a sense. Like Diddy was so tied to him that it feels like his style, the, the way he dressed and the things he did wouldn't have happened unless Diddy was there. You know? I can see that. And th that's not a knock on Biggie. I love Biggie. Um, I just feel like Diddy was a huge influence. And again, Jerome said um, it's because Tupac's influence is why he's more he's more influential than a lot of other artists. So yeah, I can agree you that too. But you're right, you're right. Number three, we got to move on. Number three, Nas. Duh, like I feel like he might be one of the perfect placements on this list. <laughs> Think so? Yes, of all time. Yes, maybe he could be four. Maybe I can see him at four. I can see I can see Pop being over him. Yeah. It's, Switched it's, them to. Yeah, as great as Nas is. It seems like it's just on hip hop, pure hip hop, but there's no outside influences here. You know, there's not a lot of businesses where you look at Nas and be like, that's a businessman. You know, I know he have his own businesses and stuff like everybody else, but when you see Jay Z, he's out here making business moves, he's out here preaching to the community about these same moves, teaching you about these moves. What Nas is rapping about this stuff, it seems like Jay Z seems to be doing. You know, it's just me. It's just me. I'm not trying to start the Jay-Z versus Nas argument. I'm only pointing out how I feel. Number two, Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar. Another perfect placement. Oh, with longevity right now, it does seem like Kendrick might be, he might be that future guy. But not only that, Kendrick Lamar is one of those rappers that has a song for every occasion. He got a we birthday song. We could go. I think so. Me, he has a celebration, celebration songs. Okay. He has protesting songs. He has songs you could cry to, songs you could turn up to, songs songs you could vibe out to, songs you could go into the gym and listen to. Like, I feel like he's one of those rappers that probably has a song for every occasion. I think you're right. Again, not an artist I listen to a lot of, but. He seems like to have taken if you put Andre 3000 and Tupac together, that's their baby. Yes, yes, you definitely would probably get Kendrick. Yes, how did he bounce so far ahead of Wayne? How did he bounce so far ahead of Wayne? Yes, because remember, at one point, Wayne was supposed to be the successor to Jay Z. This is why Jay Z is number one because he's literally your favorite rapper's favorite rapper. So how, when Jay-Z literally gave you the, the baton, how do you get pushed back so far? Behind like, behind yeah. him? <laughs> you, you did it right, Jerome. The, like Jerome just said, artistry. His artistry is completely different. Lil Wayne, for a long time, you know, he was the P-word monster, you know? And that was like a nice little era of his music, you know? Yeah. So his artistry was definitely completely different. I feel like that's probably why these venues are the way it is. <laughs> it made me so angry. Oh my god. I mean, he did a great deal of reinvent himself as well, though. But I don't think he did enough. Can Wayne? Can Wayne I rebound? Know. I don't know. I don't know. Like I don't know what's going on with Lil Wayne. I don't know. <laughs> and of course, it makes my heart hurt a little bit. I agree. I, I, again, I'm not even a fan of Wayne like that either, but I'm like, yo, Wayne's supposed to be Wayne high Wayne was supposed to have way more respect in this game. And I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's all that drama with um, Birdman, baby, but I don't know. Like, something happened and now here we are in 2023 with the uh, Wayne had face. Number, what, seven? Yeah, uh, he's number uh, seven. Uh, let's just don't time. sit right with my soul, man. All right, number one is Jay-Z. Of course, we already talked about that. So I'm happy. I'm taking the victory lap as a fan. You know, nobody's reinvented themselves one, better. One thing I can say about every single person in this top 10 list, every one of these artists 
are some type of influential to the culture. I don't right. know why people were talking trash. Like it should have been a better list. This is the best list that they could have come up with. Like, I mean, yeah. Kanye was at number 11. I feel like he's, we still have an argument for Kanye being top 10. There's still, still an argument that can argument be made. For that. We still got an argument for that. But you know, you know, his personal choices probably made them put him, made them put him at a number 11, you know. So you mean like when he contradicted himself. <laughs> About marrying that white girl, and then he went and married one. Remember, I'm just saying you can't do that in the game. If you say it on track, you gotta live it. You gotta live it. I mean, we find that that ain't that that's ain't not true. true. We know that now, but I'm saying Ice the rule still is, is there. Probably, though. Ice T is probably the longest running cop on TV ever. <laughs> but, but it could be said he knows cops, which is why he does well. Oh, right, Andre is number twelve. Andre Tk <laughs> is number twelve. If Under had more albums, I think he would he could easily be top 10 as well. So who would you take out the top 10? Take out of the top 10 if Under had more <laughs> automatically M. What are you talking about? What are stop, you talking about? Stop, stop. Because his wordplay is there. I'm not gonna take his that's time all he, away from that's him. All he got, but we but that's about all he pure got. That's artistry, all he got for me. That's all he got for and me. And influence. Artistry and influence. That's all it was. And it's because he white. I'm sorry. He got white points. <laughs> all right. We got to move on from that was the we, top 50. Because honestly, if that was the case, how many more white uh, white mainstream artists have there been as big as Eminem? Come on now. Like, let's get Malcolm real Moore, here. Malcolm Moore had a shot. But you I don't know fight. what. You want to fight today. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it was good. He doesn't. He did not have a shot. He... Some I feel like somebody might even been writing his rhymes or something because one he didn't have any type of appeal or anything, anything he compared he to giving Roger from um from Doug though. Every time I see him, that's all I think about. I'm like, Michael yo, Moore he looks like is a, Michael Moore Doug. is a cultural appropriator. Okay, okay, I'll give you that, Jerome. Malcolm, I mean, Ma- Ma- <laughs> I done said Michael Moore so many times. <laughs> Mac Miller is one of the closest that could get there. But Mac Miller, sadly, we lost that one. So Yeah. That's and see, that's, that's also another thing about this argument that people are, and then we're gonna move on, that people are having here. It was like, how is Jay-Z better than Tupac or Biggie? That's not the conversation here. It's not the conversation. They didn't, they could not continue. And that's it. Like, and we won't know, just like with the Beyonce. And Aaliyah conversation. We won't know because sadly we lost those uh, stars, those legends. Speaking of Beyonce. Is Aaliyah really a legend or is it because she died so soon? All her albums were very solid. She had a very solid growing fan base. And 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 she was going into acting where she can hold I think she was. I think her acting career was going to be so much better than her music career. But hey. Whoa. Whoa. That is. That is a. I'm not saying it's blasphemy. I don't think that's what it is. But I think is, it was. That is huge to say, man. First of all, her acting chops were pretty decent. They were pretty decent. Her brothers was too, apparently. So there's that. We barely and noticed then, the difference of the switch at the end. Of then the it was a couple of, of movies that uh, it were. Yeah, she she killed that role. But there her were brother a did too. Of you got to give him credit. He was at the end. Okay. He replaced her. We're not talking about her brother. We're talking about Aaliyah. I know. I just said he was doing, he did great. That's all I'm saying. He did great. So I think that she would have had an amazing acting career, maybe even better than her music career. Hmm. I don't know. We'll never know. But Could she perform? Did you not watch her videos? Those were epic. I she watched her epic. music videos. That's her music videos are epic. That's I'm talking, talking about them live performance. Is the mic on? Me, me, me. Hello. Are you are you are you claiming that Aaliyah might be music soul child? Is that what we're claiming here? That I gotta she... do some research, but uh yeah, Ooh, possibly. Bold, because bold think about it. Ma'am. Think about statement. it. Like I can right now, I can remember. Almost every big Whitney Houston live performance, and that mic was on. Okay, the mic was on. 
can't say too much about baby girl. Yeah, she was a beautiful girl. Yeah, she was talented. Yes, she dropped some hits when she, especially when she linked up with Timberland and Missy. It was a wrap, right? Oh man, that was that but was, that was Kool Aid and hamburgers with the fries on the side. But was her mic on when she performed? That's all I'm saying. I'm going to do some research. I don't know. I don't know. I'm going I don't to do know. some research. I, I need I need the research now, but we got to move on. But you got me in that argument, by the way, because I have no rebuttal to was the mic on. I have none. So I'm going to let you have that one. You got that one. Whew, you won that one fair and square. Um, let's talk about Beyonce really quick. Beyonce. Whew. I say that all the time. That's my cousin. Okay, first and foremost, there's so much on the internet about Beyonce. Like, stop hating. Stop hating, first of all. Everybody and all you people, please stop hating. On top of, why she got to be Illuminati? Why she, why, out of all people, why she, why I got to be her? Then it's like, kind of feels like the stuff that she do, she kind of like trolls us that, you know, she, she she might be a part of some secret society. Yeah, I think she's trolling us at this I point. I definitely think she's trolling us. <laughs> I really think she's trolling us, but there's that. that. That has nothing to do with it. But what we're talking about today are the lies that came out about her concert and these ticket prices there has been a common misconception that beyonce tickets are unaffordable right uh, this time around this time around they wanted to uh help with the uh resale part of these tickets right yeah so they wanted to do like the little registration and the pre-sale and get a code and da da da, da and do this and do that right mm-hmm in previous times, they would just open it up and there would be a set amount from whatever time the pre-sale is, whatever time the event is. Anytime these tickets, you guys see that they're like $7,000, which I've never seen before on a Ticketmaster. Uh, <laughs> the most I've ever seen, the most I've ever seen was $2,000, right? That ain't bad, and though. Guess where those $2,000 tickets were? Skybox? Right in the front. Oh. Right in the front row. You know, I'm not about to spend $2,000. Of course, I'm not going to spend no $2,000 right in the front, right? Yeah. But if you sitting in the 100s, 200s, baby, $400. Y'all spend $400 on a pair of shoes. $400. For, how, much, how much was the PS5? The PS5 is like $600. Yeah. Stop worrying about stop worrying about what these people are spending on their money just so they can see their favorite artists. They want to be touched and spit on by Beyonce. You have to pay for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got spit on by Wiz Khalifa child. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean it was inadvertently, but yeah, yeah. We know Beyonce not actually spitting on people. Also, with this thumbnail that I chose for her right now and saying that. Why do you pick that picture? Got my girl with this who face on. I don't know. I, I think it was the dress, but then the dress was cut off anyway. You can't even see so. the dress. I know. I know. It was a well, choice, okay? It was a choice. We got to move on. Also, uh, if you haven't got your tickets, I'm sorry. I hope you get them. Um, uh, Hershey added the show some, to Atlanta. There's still some tickets out there for, for some cities and things. So I didn't get mine, but congratulations to all you people that got the code and blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, all right, blah. we're gonna rapid fire these last two right now. So I saw on I think it was Shut Hot 95. Up, 50 Cent. So I, I heard it was a, a conversation on Hot 95 where they were saying that 50 Cent, how many songs does 50 Cent have in the top 100 songs of hip hop? Should he have in the top 100 songs? Personally, how many songs should 50 Cent have in the top 100 songs, greatest songs of all time? Personally, personally. I would say about three. Three oh personally. personally you say three. Yeah. Personally, um, I say one. I would say that were accepted by many in many places. I would say in the club, mm -hmm. 21 questions mm -hmm. and many men. Personally. Just, uh, okay, so let's move from personal. But actually. if I was saying like actual and what has been received by the public and most people, I would say one and that's in the club that's all i got that's that's personally and by the public standard it should just be in the club yes. that is his that is his yeah. magnus magna opus and how you say it magna opus of songs is in the club the rest of it should be all jokes from his um instagram 
feet because that man is hilarious on Instagram, man. He's disrespectful. That's what he is. He is disrespectful. Very so, disrespectful. Somebody said, I see why somebody shot him nine times. And I was like, Good Oh, God. no, no. That was a joke. Please. It's just a joke that we didn't tell. We were quoting allegedly someone said that. <laughs> I had to fit allegedly. in allegedly. I had well, to fit somebody, it in somewhere. Somebody definitely said that. I didn't say it, but somebody <laughs> definitely was like, I see why. You know, no, but we no all know who that happened to him nine times. But all right, last one. The Super Bowl is tonight. The time of recording is live. It's tonight, right? Yeah. Huh? Yes. When is the Super Bowl? Tonight? 6 30 yeah. p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, what are your predictions? Uh, on the return of Rihanna to the stage, what is your prediction? I predict that I'm gonna have a full on meltdown. Okay. <laughs> so, so you're you're obviously excited about this. I am too. I miss Rihanna. Even though I am a part of the Beehive, I am also a true member of the Rihanna Navy. Okay. You can me be and Rihanna, both. Me and Rihanna, you could definitely be both. Me and Rihanna, we grew up together. You know, I was in school and she was on the radio. But you know, we grew up together. <laughs> You know, I, I think no pressure on her, but I think she's going to come back and rock the hell out of the stage tonight. Rihanna has broke the internet at least once every about once every season for like the past since she dropped anti. She has broke the internet. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be real. Let's just be real. Like Savage X is crazy. Going crazy oh, I still. Of, I hope some of them dances come out in the Savage X too. Oh, that might be too much. That might be too much for the Super Bowl. I mean, some of it, some of it isn't too sexy. Okay, but she let's got not lounge, She got loungewear. She got let's loungewear. go with the loungewear where they're covered mostly. I just don't feel like hearing the, after the whole Sam Smith thing at the Grammys. Oh, we don't need. Let's not take. Let's not take none of the heat off of that. Let's just keep that heat going, okay? Rihanna, just do your stuff. Get out here. Hit that, lift me up. You seen that one bar? Oh yeah, internet. You seen one bar there. Do not do the whole song. Internet. One She's bar. definitely going to perform that song. And and I mean, that's why I wore my Wakanda forever. And you know, and you know, Chad would have to be on the screen. So Chad go ahead. is not going to be on the screen. He better not be on the screen. What what he got to do with Rihanna? Oh, because of the song. Because of the song, you can't sing the song without the context of the song. Hopefully, it's the very last song of the performance. The stage gonna go purple. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's about it's it's about to be a it's gonna be a thing for like a good thirty seconds. The the studio um the studio the stadium is going to shut down just like how Beyonce shut down the stadium when the heart doing the hardball bowl. We gonna be up until midnight. Oh, I'm definitely watching the game. I don't, I, know, I don't know you, if I feel like I watching football, man. I told I'm you, watch the halftime show. I told you, like, I always had a huge love for football. And when all of that stuff came out with Colin Kaepernick, I was very, very sad. And I did give up watching football for about a good four years, but nothing it's was back, changing. Baby. Nothing it's was back, changing. Baby. So now my excitement is all the way back, especially with everything going on with my team and everything. So. So my yeah. final theory about protesting and big corporations, because I uh -oh. see a lot of people, because, you know, the Harry Potter game just dropped, uh, Hogwarts Legacy, and a lot of people have been protesting that game. And I just feel like it's it's kind of not horrible to protest it. I mean, do what you're going to do, but it's very hard to protest a giant corporation. Yes, it so, is, especially by myself. <laughs> so even with that, I've been watching at one point in time, and all that stuff. It's really at one point hard in time, it felt like it was just me, my bro, and Colin protesting. That's what it felt like. So I just was yeah. like, you know, I no mean, no one really gives up anything it. they love. That's it. I had to say, I had to say it like this, but like my love for football was coming back more than you know how people weren't supporting Colin. So I just had to make a choice. Like, yeah. I really, 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 like, not watching football did something to me. <laughs> I think, I think, and we got to end this conversation because we were double overtime at this point. But I think the best way to support people like that 
when they're having, you know, like Colin in this situation was to donate to his foundations mm -hmm. so he could do work in the field that he needed to do the work in because he needs the money to move up. Don't get me wrong. Yes, he could pay for a lot of it himself, but you, you still kind of have to have that, you know, that, that grassroots movement for the morale of it all and to keep this going uh, forever because this is a the things that he was trying to protest, it's not going to end tomorrow. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we all started watching, well, not everybody. Most people started watching football. Oh, okay. Everybody started watching football except for me um, <laughs> a year or two Aww. afterwards. So, you know okay. what I'm saying? No, that's fine. I'm, I just kind of fell out of love with it. I was never, I'm a basketball fan for the most part. Oh, see, there's the difference. There's the Being difference. from Alabama with a whole family that loves Alabama, where I'm not the most, um, you know, competitive person ever for real. So it's like, I just want to enjoy things. And I couldn't enjoy it like that because everybody was making it into this big thing. For me, it's like, it's not that deep. Yeah. It's not that deep. You know, they would call me after Auburn would lose. And it could be 11, 12 o'clock. I'm like, yo, I don't care. It was a game. We lost. And then they be like, oh, you just mad because your team lost? I'm like, no, no, I, I really don't care. I just don't care. <laughs> so you're really going to be mad if LeBron ain't do nothing with them that going Lakers this year. That's when you're going to get mad. Hold on. Hold on. We're we doing okay right now. We got – we it's looking promising. Okay, we got some good – some key trades. We got Russell. Russell came back. So, you know what I'm saying? Ice Vane's back on the squad. Things looking All up right. again. Things looking up again, baby. Thank you guys for coming through today. I feel on like another you're hating installment. On Are you hating on this right now? Are you hating on the Lakers? We do have to end the show though. So go ahead, end the show. I you already the, done. I love the Lakers. I told you growing up, I actually love the Lakers. I had to tell myself myself to stop like, like ah, I can't talk today. I really can't talk today. I had to tell myself to stop liking the Lakers. Because I saw how big their fan base was, and I don't fan like bases stuff. can kill love for anybody. I get yeah, it. Yeah, and I don't like liking stuff that a lot of people like. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. All right, all right, we gotta go. So, <laughs> Space Gang, thank you for coming out today. Thank you, Jerome, for jumping. Uh, Jerome Wright. Make sure you guys follow his Instagram. That link is in the uh description of this video again i want to say that because he you know go support him he's doing great work out here in the world he's a great person he's a light in the world and you know we just people like that definitely deserve support so go support him um support his business if you can if you're in the area and you need your dog train you know that's your guy right there um but that's it for the show today um do me a favor head over to www the BK Space Show.com. What are you doing? She was mouthed and she threw me off. Anyway, <laughs> go over. <laughs> go over to www.thebkspaceshow.com. What she said. Whoa, whoa, that was like. <laughs> The music, but the, the intro music. Anyway. <laughs> Do me a favor, head over to www.thepkspaceshow.com where you can get everything you need to know about the show. Nova came, let her know what else they got to do for us. Head on over to Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating, and leave us a written review. Hit that like, that follow button on Apple Podcasts, and head on over to Spotify and leave us a five-star review as well. And Answer a couple of questions. Like us and subscribe over there on Spotify too. I can't talk. I can't talk. <laughs> How am I be on a podcast and can't talk? Like what? It's been, it's been one of those weeks for us. We just get back. We took off a week because we had personal things going on. So rest in get peace back to at the swing my of Uncle things. Larry. Rest in peace to my Aunt Joan. Love you guys. Rest in peace. Rest in power. Rest in power. Yes, indeed. Man, that's our show, man. Um, happy birthday to anybody's birthday that's out there tonight. Thank you for listening, people. We up out of this thing. Let's go, Chiefs. Man, don't come in here with no let's go, Chiefs. Let's go. <laughs> it still say we laugh. It just... I, I <laughs> 
We rusty. We mad rusty today. We mad rusty today. All right, all right. We out, y'all. We out.